Two, one, go! Hello there! Welcome to Game Sweet Zone, the series where we analyze and recreate video game music. It's great to have you here, as always. Today, we'll be taking a look at Flower Fields from Kirby's Epic Yarn. Or Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn for you 3DS survivors out there. Live from your blade. I'm immortal! Wow! This piece was composed by Tomoya Tomita in 2010. For this piece, the time signature is 4-4 and the tempo is 126 beats per minute. Today, we will go over info that will help you transcribe music on your own, for the beginner. Yeah, kind of. This piece is an example, of course, but this helps nicely if you want to make a remix, learn something on piano, and more. However, you can do it no matter how much knowledge of music you have. So I suppose this is like a bonus. Hope this helps. No. I usually start with the melody. We'll simply listen to the music, put down the notes we hear, and check for accuracy by playing the music and our notes side by side. Oh, and feel free to repeat sections of the music as much as needed for clarity. Anyway, let's say we come across a roadblock and can't figure out the note. Well, we can't provide for ourselves, so let's just mooch off the notes we already have. We're going to refer to scales to help us. Scales are patterns of notes that help us understand what's going on. Scales give us a better understanding of melodies and are also used to create them. We can achieve a variety of different sounding pieces by using different scales. All 12 notes on the keyboard, A to G, have a scale of their own. Knowing what makes up a scale will help us solve the mystery of the missing note. Zoinks. They're made up of intervals, and an interval tells us the distance between notes. Take a look at this, E and F. They're right next to each other, so they're a half step away. A half step is basically one move away from the starting note, like G sharp and A, and B and C. A whole step is the same thing as two half steps, so it's basically two moves away. D and E are a whole step away. 1, 2. The same goes for F and G, 1, 2, and A and B, one, 1, 2. Specific patterns of intervals are what make up different scales. For major scales, which are super common, the pattern from the starting note is this. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's try it. Say we want to know what the A major scale is. Start on A and use the pattern. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's A major. This works with every single major scale. So, whenever you have a little trouble figuring out the melody, try finding the scale. Take the notes you already have and know are correct, and stack them. Ow! Test out the whole half pattern from any note until it works. More than one scale can be used in a piece of music, so keep an eye out. Here, let's find a scale or two. First, we put down the notes we have and stack them. Now let's check the pattern. Whole, whole, okay, so we don't have enough information there. Whole, okay, so we get a half there and that's not what we want. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Okay, so even if we're missing a note, it seems like this is the E major scale. Though it might be a little hard to see, take a look at what notes fall in line. Looks like we have a change right here, so we will stack them again. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole. We're missing one note. But it looks like an A major scale anyway. I came across at least five scales in this piece. 
If all else fails, compare your surrounding notes to the one you're trying to get. It'll give you an idea of how far the pitches are from each other. Scales typically don't change extremely often, but can still change anyway, so it's good to be aware of what's happening in the music. There are also other types of scales, and the music can even ignore scales at any point, so this may not work or apply all of the time. It's a basis, I'm just introducing you to the concept, it's not always that simple. You just lost an empty can, congratulations. You, you, you guys want to learn about key signatures? The key is the music's home. It has a lot to do with the scales you find. The key is the big picture and tells us the tonal center of the piece. In other words, it tells us what notes to expect. Like scales, there's a key for every single note out there, and scales basically represent the written out form of the key you're in. So if a piece is in the key of C major, expect to mainly be playing notes in the C major scale. Knowing all of this, you may be thinking that keys and scales seem quite similar, huh? Nope. Well, you're right for thinking that they're alike. There's a big difference between them, however. The key is the big picture. It's the guide that tries to govern the whole piece. When you look at the music from a distance, you see the key signature and think, okay, this is in the key of F, so I'll generally be playing notes from the F major scale. Scales simply have a smaller scope. More than one scale can be used in a piece, but can still be in the same key, or home, or big picture. For example, the music may be using the F scale for most of the piece, but then it starts going into the C scale for two bars, and then comes back to F. We can still be in the house of F, though. Take a look at what scale is used the most frequently to get the key. Even then, the key of a piece of music can be subjective, so maybe your answer won't be the same as the one else's, but that's okay. So, how does this help us? Simple. As long as you continue to keep the scales you found in mind, you'll save yourself from losing your way when it comes to figuring out the rest of the music. Anyway, the E major scale was used the most from what I've seen, so I'll say that this music is in the key of E major. If we were working with sheet music, notating what key the piece is in lets us lower the amount of sharps or flats we have to write in, which therefore makes things easier to read. Let's say you hear this chord. After a few times, I can hear the notes of the chord individually. However, it can be hard to work out by ear sometimes. Chords tend to change often, so this could be a problem for every measure. You could experiment by placing the notes down and checking with the music, but there's another way. If we know what makes up an average chord, while also keeping scales in mind, we have a more reliable method of figuring out the notes. Any group of notes played at the same time can be considered a chord. The most common chord you'll hear is what's called a triad, and it has three notes. When it comes to the big picture I've been talking about, chords are the smallest in the hierarchy. The key is the big picture, scales are smaller in scope, and chords typically change all the time. Like scales and keys, there are different kinds of chords as well. Wow! Major and minor chords are quite common. A major chord is composed of a root, which is your starting note, a major third, and a minor third. What are these thirds I'm talking about? Simply put, they are specific intervals. Remember half steps and whole steps? One and one two? Major and minor thirds are just two more intervals that we use to determine the other notes of the triad. Let's say we want to build a C major chord. C will be our root note. We need a major third after C. A major third is just two whole steps. For example, if a whole step from C is D, one, two, then a major third from C is E. One, two, one, two, and three. Next up, we need to go a minor third away from this note. A minor third is one whole step and one half step. First, we move by a whole step from E, one, two, then a half step, one. G is our last note. This is C major. To summarize, major triads are made up of a root, major third, then minor third. As for minor triads, they're made up of a root, minor third, then major third. As you can see, the order of thirds for major and minor triads are opposites. Now that we know what makes up a typical chord, let's find this one. 
We know we're playing within the E major scale right now, so we'll avoid going out of key. We have one note, so we'll just make chords and see what happens. First, let's try a D sharp major chord. You may also feel free to rearrange the notes of a chord by octaves. It will still be the same chord, but just inverted if the root isn't at the bottom. As we can see, two notes are out of key. Sounds bad. How about D sharp minor, since the F sharp from the scale is in there? Okay, how about by an octave? Okay, so A sharp is still out, but these two notes sound fine. Let me go ahead and put F sharp in its original spot. Maybe it's a B major chord, since F sharp is a minor third away from D sharp. One, two, one. And D sharp is a major third from B. One, two, one, two. Not bad. Sounds like F sharp should be down. Oh. Oh. And that's the chord. When we actually go through this process, it's not as slow as it may seem. That's just the nature of explanations. Like scales and keys, however, there are also many different types of chords, so the specific patterns for major and minor chords may not give you what you're looking for all of the time. What? But it always works anyway, so pfft, whatever, right? Oh, that's right, Jerry. I'm forgetting something. I'm not done boring you people just yet. I have a very special secret to share with you. Every scale has a set of naturally fitting notes. Just take every other note and make them triads. Basically, this gives you a set of chords to always be aware of. If you have music that's playing in key, and they're playing chords, it's extremely likely that one of these chords are being used, either normally or inverted. Therefore, when you're trying to figure out a chord and you have one note so far, you already know your options. Again, it's dependent on what the music is doing, but this helps speed things up. Let me show you. Looks like we have an E. That's in key, so let's try every other note from E. Maybe those two notes are too high, so let's put them down. Got it again! See how helpful that was? Nope! Anyway, hopefully this information about music theory was helpful. You can totally cover and transcribe music without any theory knowledge. That's how I started years ago. It does help, though. MIDI files let synthesizers make use of the notes we have. Synthesia, a piano tutorial program, can take MIDI files and help you learn how to play the songs you put in, for example. Sweet! To create a MIDI file, I first save two versions of this file, then use the one for our MIDI and prepare and export it. If you don't prepare for MIDI export, you will likely be left with an empty file. Let's see what we have so far. What do you think? Good enough to play at your local supermarket? Liquor store? <laughs> Funeral? Perhaps we can make it sound better by using a nicer sounding piano library. We're still not quite there yet. The reason for this is quite simple though. We haven't made use of dynamics. Dynamics refer to the varying volume levels that we hear during a performance. We won't have all of these notes being hit with the same exact strength every time. Varying the dynamics keeps things interesting. In FL Studio, there's a velocity editor where the notes are. The higher the stems are, the louder the notes are.
we will be varying these volume levels throughout the music. We will just make sure to stay under 0 dB. A sustain pedal, also known as a damper pedal, automatically sustains the notes you play to their maximum durations when you push it. Simply put, it lets the sound ring for a while. We'll use this at certain points like the music does. To do this in FL Studio, I'll browse my piano library's parameters, right click on the damper pedal control when I find it, edit in piano roll, and go from there. It's more noticeable if I show you from a lower octave. Looks like that covers it for this piece. I'm really glad we finally managed to get another episode out, especially before the month was over. Thank you for sticking around for this long. It's been more than a whole year since I've last uploaded one. I left the MIDI file and a piano tutorial for the music in the description, if it helps, and we'll play our finished product at the end of the video like always. I know this video was a bit music theory intensive, but remember that there are no strict rules for making music. In the end, a composer can do whatever they want and don't need to follow any rules. Just use the information however you wish to aid you when it comes.